for the purpose of this tutorial I'm just going to do a very quick little um, Apache Tears um, sample. So we need to start with a chain. It is important with this method, if you want to use this method for doing the border, that you actually do start with a chain rather than um, the foundation double crochet. So I'm just going to start with like a random number of stitches really. What this will be though, so I'm just working ordinary chains. Oh, if you notice, I didn't actually start with a... I'll start again. It just makes it nice and neat at the bottom. I always start my chains. Don't start with a slip knot on my hook. I just twist the yarn around like so. So I've now got the working yarn here. It's just twisted around. Pull that first loop through there, but don't pull the end. So you're left with a nice loose knot there. And that counts as our first chain. So I'm just now going to do... I'll do about 20 chains, something like that. What you will need to do is however many chains you need, the pattern says, and you're very likely to need to add two extra because most designers will give you one edge stitch, so, um, or border stitch they sometimes call it, which is basically an extra stitch um, on each side of the pattern to... Um, which you work through both loops. So normally with overlay for moon's sake, you only work your double crochets through the back loops, but on the ends, you'll do an edge stitch through both loops. And when I, for most of my patterns, what I actually do is I work um, two edge stitches. So, so I will just give that extra sort of firmness at the edge. If in that case, what you will do is take the double crochet, like the inside double crochets, the ones net immediately next to the pattern and change them into a chain which is what I'm now going to explain so I have no idea how many chains I've got here for the purpose of what I'm doing that'll be fine just a little length so I can show you what I mean so what you now do when on your, your first row of your pattern which may well be called a foundation row what we're now going to do as always you miss this first chain because that is effectively your turning chain and then what we're going to need to, again it's important to do this we've got to work into the little back bump on the chain. So if we flip that chain over, there we go, you should see this little bump here. So we're going to be working. So miss the first one, working into that. So this is our first stitch, that becomes our, our edge stitch. And now, something you don't normally do when you do an overlay mosaic, we're going to do a chain. So one chain, then miss this next chain, and then we're going to basically double crochet right up until we've got two chains left. Always into this little back bump. I'll explain why in a moment. Okay. So into that back bump, you just work on your double crochet. So do that until we get to two chains left. Okay, so I've now got two chains left. So now we're going to do the opposite to what we did at the beginning of the row. So we have one chain. We're going to miss this second from last chain. I'm just going to pop the very last double crochet into that last chain there. Okay. So that's that there and I'll explain now I'll show you now why we worked into that back bump because what that does if we just lift that up can you see there that actually creates something very similar to what happens with the top of our stitches there at the bottom and we're going to need both of these loops when we come to do our envelope border okay so now we can just do what we normally do with overlay mosaic Fasten off at the end. Pull that tight. Okay. Now what you can do, if you're struggling to see that where the chain is, you can actually pop a little marker into that chain at each end. Okay. So there was the chain. There. I probably should have said that when we were doing it. Okay. So you can do that if you want. So now what we're going to do, as you always would, we'll pick up a different colour 
Um, and whoops, let me use, drop my yarn over there. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to do a simple Apache Tears pattern. So I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook, which again I do like I did when I started the chain. It may not be a proper slip knot, but this is work, this works for me. Now I just grab the yarn like so, okay, wrap it round, pull the loop through, and this time I'm going to pull that tight, and that becomes what I call a slip knot. <laughs> so we're going to start with a standing double crochet in this first stitch there so it's the one before the chain okay so it doesn't matter what I mean I'm doing Apache tears this could be any overlay mosaic pattern that you like you just got to remember that between this edge stitch and where the pattern starts you're going to do a chain that's the important thing and then we miss this chain and we do our pattern so for me I'm just going to do one Two, three double crochets actually they're all going to be in the back loop here because I haven't started my, pat my pattern row yet so yeah it's now going to be double crochet all the way along till we get to that next marker okay. so this is just ordinary we'll say whatever overlay mosaic pattern you're doing do the row and the important thing is when you now come to that chain you don't work into it you just do another chain miss that chain there and then oops, pop your edge stitch into that very last stitch again okay and fasten off I'm not leaving the ends too long here because it's just a little swatch. Normally I would leave them a little bit longer than this to give me something to work with at the end. So when you've got to sort of tie them, knot them together, you want them long enough that you can actually pick them up. Okay, what we'll do, I might get a bit crowded with the stitch markers, but I'm going to just pop them in again. You might find that useful when we'd actually come to do the border. Or you may not, you may find they get in the way, but we'll give that a try. Okay. Okay, time to do the next row. So let's say I'll just create a quick Apache Tears pattern. So remember, I want my slip knot on my hook. And I do a standing double to crochet edge stitch, which is absolutely standard for overlay mosaic. Then we've got to remember to do a chain. Miss that, that chain there. And now I'm going to start, so back loop only, because we're doing overlay mosaic, I'm just going to do two, three, back loop double crochets. And then I'm going to drop down and do a treble there. I'm just going to repeat that across, just to give us something that looks like a mosaic design. So, one, two, three. And then one treble. One, two, three, one treble. And then I've just got room for one more double crochet before I get to the end of my row. So then it's a case of, as we said, one chain, miss that chain, and then pop a double crochet in the end through both loops. Pull that one nice and tight. I can better carry on with the old stitch markers, hadn't I? So, not in that first edge stitch, but pop it in that chain. If you haven't got real stitch mark, uh, you know, like the, the specific stitch markers, you can use a little bit of thread, or you might find you don't really need them, but that'll just help us when we're first doing that border. Okay. So just carry on like that. I'll just do one more row. So we've got slip knot.
double crochet, standing double crochet there un under both loops. Remember to add that chain in. So say whatever overlay mosaic pattern you're doing, just add that chain. And then what we're going to do, we're going to this time we're going to start with two double crochets. So again, I've missed that chain, which has got the marker in it. Two double crochets, and then one front loop treble. And again, we'll do this exactly the same as we did before. So we're doing Apache tears. It's still going to be three double crochets. One treble, two rows down. One, two, three double crochets. One treble, two rows down. And then we've got room for two more double crochets. Then we're going to miss that chain. Do a chain first. So chain there, miss that one. And don't forget to do your little edge stitch under. There you go. Try and show you it clearer. Under both loops at the end. And fasten off. So I'm just going to carry on now and repeat that a few more times so we've got a little bit more to work with and then I will show you the main point of this um, this little video which will be how to do the really really easy pick up for a double border. Okay so this is just my little swatch done. I haven't put the markers in the last few rows because I just wanted to actually show you how it looks. Can you just about see the chain spaces there? So it's quite subtle, but the time we've worked, we're going to be basically working in to these chain loops to make our double border. So by the time that's done, you wouldn't even know that there were any chain spaces there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start, if we now turn around, this is, you can do, you can, you can start at this end if you want, but because we've got the markers down there, I'm going to just switch it around. But it's basically a case of starting in this chain on either the last chain on the last row you worked or effectively like the first chain at the bottom oh and just to say I've just trimmed off my ends nice and short usually what I would do if I was making a proper prep project rather than just this little swatch I would have actually tied these together in pairs just to make doubly certain that they're nice and secure but as it's just for this little swatch I've just chopped them off but yeah tie them together first then cut them to about this length which is about sort of two centimeters just under an inch thereabouts Okay, so where we're going to start, like I said, I'm now just on the bottom edge, I'm going to start, oh, and I've got different hooks, so for the main part, I was actually using a 4mm hook here, what I'm going to do, you can carry on with the same hook if you want for the border, but I find it can be just a little bit sort of floppy, seems a little bit floppy like that, so I usually like to drop down, here we go, drop down half a millimetre, so I've now got a 3.5mm hook, which I'm now going to be using. Okay, and also I've just picked up a totally different colour, just so it's easier for you to see where all the border stitches and everything are. Okay, so I'm going to start, I'm going to start now with a standing double crochet in this, so that's just that front loop there of that chain that I was saying about, which is, well, this is why we did our um, foundation row into that back bump, so we've now got nice little loops when we do the back border we're going to work into the other loop okay now when I do a standing double crochet and I'm going to be joining it in in a ring rather than just on the end I don't actually pull that knot tight so we'll start again remember how I started before twist it round but I'm not going to pull it through normally to do a slip knot I would pull it through I'm just going to leave it whoops twisted like so so that is effectively like a slip knot, but it's not. It's nice and loose. I'm going to make standing double crochet into the... Can you see? Try not to get my fingers in the way. Set my hook there. Double crochet. Now you can do this all in trebles if you want. But I'm just going to show you double crochets for now. So it's in that, un that missed chain at the bottom there. And we're going to do a chain for the corner. And then another double crochet in the same place. So we've now created our corner. And what I'm just going to do, you know, it's probably I've got some more stitch markers there. I'm just going to pop stitch marker there under that 
that chain in the corner so it's easy to find okay so that's that so now we turn around and this is where it's quite handy that we've marked these stitches because it's really obvious where we've now got to make our next stitch so our first stitch is going to be into there where that marker is I'll actually leave them we should be able to do it with the marker there just so I can show you okay so we're just going to do double crochet into that chain okay and that's all we're now going to do so next one was marked as well so we're going to do double crochet into there and that it's as simple as that that is how you start there you go there so those ones are all marked but hopefully you can now see it's just as easy now I've got the next chain is there to just carry on along by all means if you want to mark them more you do that makes it a little bit easier maybe so we go all the way along just working a double crochet into that chain that we inserted at the edge okay so I've now got up the edge there and I'm now come now to which is now the top edge of my little swatch and again we've got this chain there so we're going to do another corner so double crochet one chain double crochet I'm just going to pop that marker in there, sorted. So we now mark that corner chain. Now what we're going to do all the way along the top edge is just work into this front loop. So double crochets into every stitch there. Okay. See how easy it is to pick all this up no need for any slip stitches or indeed as I always used to do till I had this brainwave about this way of doing it um, front post stitches no need for any of that it's just a case of working into this little loop all the way along so we now get whoops and we now get to the next chain so that's the last actual stitch there we're now at that chain at the end so I'm just gonna as I've done on the other corners one double crochet one chain one double crochet there we go pop a marker in there oh, get it to close there we go and now again I'm gonna work down this edge so we've got this is the chain so this the chain on the top we've just worked into so we now need it'll be easier again when we get down to where they're marked just go work our double crochets into those loops from the chains on the edge okay and there and then we've got ones I marked two three four and then as we've been doing all the way along again you can see that's the hopefully you can see that that's where there's a chain no stitches made into it so again we're just going to pick up this front loop there whoops <laughs> if I can do it What's wrong with me? Let's try again. Lovely. So one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet into there. Put my little marker in the chain. Or in the chain space, I suppose, take with me. Now we're just going to go along this bottom edge here. So double crochets all the way along. okay so it's as simple as that and then the last one okay 
so hopefully you can see how nice and neat that looks and also how easy it was just to use, by inserting that chain just to be, pick up those stitches so now I'm just gonna do a quick join in there like so so I've just done a slip stitch there to join and now what we're gonna do just do another round do another round of double crochet so one chain that doesn't count as a stitch okay so I've just now removed that marker that was in this first chain and what we're going to do and I say this chain doesn't count as a stitch what we're now going to do is work into the back loop of that chain I'm just going to do whoops get here one double crochet one chain one double crochet and then say pop that marker back into that chain again Then we're going to double crochet all the way along till we get to the next corner. Again, keep it in the back loops. You don't have to do the back loops. You could do it um, through both loops if you wanted. You could do a row of trebles if you wanted. If you do a row of trebles, you just need extra stitches in the corner though, because the oops, excuse me, because the stitch is taller. So rather than doing one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet, you'd probably need to do two trebles one double crochet uh, one chain two trebles just because a row of, a round of trebles takes basically twice as many it's twice as high as a row of double crochet so you need twice as many stitches in the corner I say there's the so I've now done double crochets up to the corner so I'm going to take that marker out that chain and now in that chain can't even see it is a chain it just looks like another stitch but it helps you get around the corner so there's one double crochet one chain one double crochet and again so we don't lose track of where that corner is I'm just gonna pop my marker back in there like so so that's it just carry on around like so working double crochet into the back loops along the sides and when you get to that marked corner stitch just do into a corner chain just do that one double crochet one chain one double crochet there and I will see you when you get back to the beginning okay so I've now got just about back to the beginning again I've just got one more stitch to do on this round and that is going to be basically if you can see try and count back to explain so we've got there's our marked corner stitch so this was our first stitch of um, this round second round which went into that corner then we've got this is a chain so that bit there that is the chain that doesn't count as a stitch so this is actually the slip stitch at the end of round one so we're going to make our last double crochet into the back loop of that okay and now we've completed the round now if i was going to be making this border any bigger i would do exactly the same as we did at the beginning here which is slip stitch into that stitch like so one chain and then start again with a double crochet one chain double crochet into that marked chain but i'm not going to do that and just pull those two back because i'm just going to as it's only tiny I'm just going to leave it as that so what i'm going to do is an invisible join so that means chopping off the yarn there pulling that through and in case you don't know how to do an invisible join i'm just reaching for my tapestry needle right what i'm going to do is just thread that yarn that end into the needle so we haven't fastened it off we've just literally pulled it through so you've just got one thread a yarn coming out of the middle of this basically the chain the top of the stitch there so now I'm going to take this hook and where we've got our marker that's where I'm going to I'm not going to put it into here because that would effectively create an extra stitch loop there we're going to be replacing the loop at the top of this stitch with our join so I'm going to pop that needle through there where the marker is Pull it round. Now don't pull it too tight because we want this loop we're now creating to look just like the others. So now you insert your needle back into the middle there and I like to pick up this extra loop at the back as well for extra security. So put that down there like so. 
There we go. Pull it just tight enough. There we are. That it looks just the same as all the other loops. So you're not even going to know that's where the join was. So when you've done that, just flip it over, leaving this end. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that there. Again, make sure you don't pull this too tight because you don't want to know tighten up what we've done on the top. They want to leave that looking nice and neat, like so. So, like that. I'm just going to leave it in. I'd go backs and forwards a few more times. If I was um, doing a proper piece, but that'll do for now. Chop it off there. Same with this end. You want to weave that one in, um, obviously, to make sure, especially because we didn't actually put a knot on it. So I'll just do a little bit. Just, but yeah, make sure you've gone backs and forwards a few times. So you can just go underneath there. What I tend to like to do is actually wrap around this last bit again. Go in the same direction under a few stitches and then go back. So don't go back straight underneath because you'll just unravel what you've done. So just pick up this little leg of that stitch there, go back. So you can do that a few times just to make sure it's all nice and secure. Okay, don't need to trim that off particularly neatly because we're now going to do the other side of the border. So there we go. This is what we've now got on the wrong side. I'll flip it back again so you can see the right side. So you can see just how easy it was to pick up all those stitches down the edge without needing to worry about any round of slip stitches. Okay, so flip it over. So what we now need to do is pick up our yarn again. And we're going to do basically the same thing on this side. So we'll, we'll start at a different corner to where we started the last one. So I'm going to just basically come over here and start here. Okay. So as before, standing double crochet in this. You can see that last unworked chain there and that last loop. So you've still got your edge stitch at the end, which we're ignoring. So we've got... One standing double crochet, one chain, and another standing double crochet in another double crochet. It's not a standing one because it was attached. So there we are. So now oh, I didn't get any new markers out. So now I'm going to pop a marker in there. And we're going to do exactly the same as we did for round one on the other one, really. So it's a case of now, you should be able to see, you just about still see those chains there. So we're just going to work double crochet into all of them. Like so. Okay. So just pick up that little loop there. See where I'm working? So you've just got that chain there. There's nothing worked into it. You can just see I fold that down. There's a space. Okay. So along the sides, nice and straightforward, you just pick up that other loop of the chain that you can see on the back. There we go. Almost to the end again. That's the last one down the side, and we've now got to the top bit. So again, we're going to find we've got this loop here of the chain. It's just going to be one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet in that. Pop our marker in that chain. And then it's okay, so you can see we've got a loop here. We've actually sort of got two, but you ignore that little bottom bump. We're just going to work double crochets all the way along there. Okay, so this is just what you did on round one on the other side. We're just picking up the other side of the stitches. I'll just go to the end of this row, get us around the next corner, and then I will leave you to it. Okay. 
So it's nice to just be able to get on with the border without having to worry about that round of slip stitches where it's very difficult sometimes to get the right number of stitches because you can miss one here and there and also it can be quite a struggle to get your hook through certainly when you're on the wrong side of the row of slip stitches to get your hook into it okay so here we are i got to that next corner so we've got in that try not to get my fingers in the way sort of naturally seem to want to bring my finger over okay so double crochet one chain double crochet then whoops still didn't get a marker right pop the marker into that chain okay and then again as before we're just going to pick up these chains on the way down so there we go So, so you carry on around like that, do your last corner, and I'll meet you when you get to where we started. Okay, so I've now got back to where I started on row one, of round one, so I'm just going to do like we did before, if you remember, which is slip stitch into this first double crochet okay so that's that joined so now we're going to do exactly the same as we did for round two on the front so there is our, our chain it doesn't count as a stitch take the marker out and then in there we're going to be working one double crochet one chain one double crochet then pop that marker back into that chain in the middle there like so then it's just a case of doing around oops get the right end doing around a back loop double crochets I'm just going to do that all the way around until we get to the marked chains in the corners and then we'll do one double crochet one chain one double crochet in that marked stitch and actually move that marker up to the new chain on round round two and that's that when you get to the end just join like you did before and then i'll get i'll come back and we'll go through the joining round okay so i've now completed my little back border here um so it's only two little rounds normally obviously on a bigger project you'd have a probably a much wider border maybe a patterned one doesn't matter whatever you've done there the important thing was to show you how to pick up the stitches using those chains at the edges okay so now all we need to do we're going to flip that over so we just need to join the two together so that's nice and straightforward to do that we're just going to i've just got a contrast in yarn just so you can see better what i'm doing again so start with we need to now pick up If we can see where we're going, I'm just going to take that out of there. So you can see where I've got to go. If you're worried when you take your marker, I just stick like a needle in. That's the stitch where we've now got to go. We've got a standing double crochet. Pick that up again. Okay. So there was that marked chain. So I can now take my needle out of the way. Do the same with the one at the back so again just go through this front loop as we're seeing it but it'll be the back loop so basically into that chain and work same as we've been doing in all the other corners one double crochet one chain one double crochet so we're making sure we go through both of those and now all we're going to do i'm going to go all the way around the edge picking up that loop there and try not to get my fingers in the way and that loop there so we're now joining both together with a round of double crochets do that all the way around ok 
Okay, try not to get my finger in the way, which I tend to do. Oops. Okay, so a round of double crochets, just picking up those sort of inner loops. Uh, you can go through both loops if you want, it just won't get this sort of line on your border. Okay. So carry on all the way around like that. When you get to those chains in the corner, the marked chains, just remember to do one double crochet one chain, one double crochet when you work through both of those together. And that is that.